Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's video, we're going to be making a single step handrail. We're going to be using some of this inch and three quarter uh, rail cap, and we're going to be using some decor pieces. Uh, such as these end pieces with a, a fancy curl. I believe they call them a lamb's foot or a lamb's toe. And those are actually the same detail as the wall cap and uh, or the rail cap. And they're going to be welded on here on either end. Uh, we're going to be mounting that to a concrete surface. We're using this three inch square flat plate. And that's three eighths of an inch thick. And then also over the top of that plate will be this shoe and it has a, a one inch uh, square opening here to accommodate a one inch square tube. So all these accord pieces right here, we're going to put together a single step handrail. Let's get started on today's video. All right, like I mentioned, I wanted to kind of give you a closer look of what I've got going on right here. Now you can see that I purchased this stuff at kingmetals.com. Uh, you know, I'm not affiliated with them by any uh, means, but uh, I happen to have a store right down the street for me. It makes it very convenient for stuff like this. Uh, all kinds of different decor. Uh, decor. Uh, I mentioned this was a 3 8 thick plate. It's actually 3 16 of an inch thick. Uh, the 3 inch square plate there. And then this is the shoe that goes over the top. They make this in cast iron as well. They didn't have any in stock, so I chose the aluminum one. It's going to be painted. It'll be just fine. All right, so typically when I start uh, to do a handrail, I, I like to make a template. You know, every set of stairs or every steps, they're all different. You know, typically uh, uh, a normal size step might have a six inch rise with a 12 inch run. Some of them are seven or 14. They're all different, at least here in California or in Southern California, at least where I'm from. Uh, you know, they all might be different everywhere. So I like to make a template to get started with. Usually I use a two by four, depending on the length of the stair run or steps. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna be using my adjustable T-square right here because this is gonna be a really, a single step short handrail. So this is gonna work out really good for me. With this adjustable T-square right here, it's the same as making a template. It gives me the adjustability to adjust the angle of what we need to do. So how I got started was I set the base right here. Uh, this handrail is going to be about 34 inches off the ground. Now, some states might be different in code-wise. They could be from 34 to 42, 34 to 36, depending on where you're from. Uh, this one is going to be 34 inches tall, and it's going to have a rail of about 24 inches. So basically what I did is I set this part here plumb on the location it's going to be mounted, and then I adjusted the angle right here to accommodate the rail itself, and then I measured the distance from the bottom of the rail here and the top of the rail here. Both of them need to be right at about 32 inches. I cranked down and locked it in, and there's my template. This is what we're gonna use for this particular hand run. Like I said, uh, handrail I should say. Uh, like I said though, two by fours or, or any kind of wood material, two by twos is what I generally make a template out of. And that's a good way to get your angles just right. All right, so I'm over at the cutoff saw and you can see that uh, I've got that little extension that I've got mounted to the end of my bench right there, and uh, that's worked out pretty good for me. I've, yeah, for the longer materials, I just set the material up there and pull it out. It is the same exact level as the saw itself. There might be a video on that uh, or something about that in an upcoming video. All right, so I'm back over here at the welding table. Uh, I've got my small little piece here. This is uh, 15 inches long. And by the time uh, these two pieces get welded on the end right here, uh, it's gonna equal 24 inches. Uh, so first thing I wanna do is, I've got a piece of one inch square tube right here, and this is ultimately uh, what we're gonna be using for the post for this handrail. But for now, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my table dogs here. Now snap them in place, pull this against this, 
and I'm going to clamp this down on both sides. And now what we have is a completely flat and parallel surface to work with. Next thing in here is we want to stick the handrail up against this and we're going to put this um, lamb's foot or lamb's toe up against this side right here. Uh, one thing about this is we're going to have to prop this up a little bit. You can see that this, if I weld it on like this, it's going to end up being crooked. So I got a piece of uh, quarter inch, just flat wood stock. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and just prop that up about like that and then bring this in. One thing that I noticed here that, and this sometimes this happens, this rail cap is it's fairly thin uh, versus this right here. It is fairly thick. The profile is the same, but the thickness is a little bit different. And so this is why we're gonna have to accommodate this in a different way. And later on when I weld this, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of grinding to kind of blend that in a little bit. But for now, uh, we're gonna just clamp these things in place. I'm gonna start by clamping this in place here. All right, so I'm using these armor clamps right here, and these things are uh, uh, pretty much adjustable for, for a lot of sizes. So this is the smaller size, you know, anywhere from, I wanna say, inch and a half down to zero. Uh, uh, they just kind of self-close and clamp on themselves, which is pretty cool. I really like them. Now, these are armor clamps, uh, or not armor, but these are Hanson clamps. Uh, I've had these for about 10 years, and funny is I was just looking at these things, and they are exactly the same. So I don't know if Armour bought Hanson out or whatever the deal is, but these things here are exactly the same, even to the markings that are on here. Uh, exactly the same. Pretty cool clamp, though. All right. Let's clamp this one in place. All right, so now we're perfectly flat against here and flat against here. And we are up and we're matching here. Let's get this other side in right here. All right, they are perfectly, perfectly lined up, nice and flat. Let's go ahead and get some tacks on both the front and the back side of this, and then we'll flip around and weld it out. Now, what's really critical and important is this thing's probably going to have a tendency to warp a little bit, uh, and so I'm going to try to keep it as straight as I can, clamp to this as much as I can to try to keep this uh, rail as straight as possible. All right, so we've got it welded on the outside right here. All this is gonna be ground down and blended in, but this is the problem that we're having right now, and I, I mentioned that early on, is the piece of uh, rail cap right here is a, probably a different manufacturer than the end pieces right here, and so the rail cap is a lot thinner uh, than the end pieces here. Although the profile's the same, uh, they're from different manufacturers and so they're built a little bit differently. So that just happened to be what I, what I ended up with. Um, it's ideally, it'd be ideal to be able to match the end pieces with the rail cap. And I think if you search that out, you probably can. I already had this rail cap in stock and I just bought these end pieces. So now I'm trying to uh, uh, blend it all together. So what we're gonna do right here is I'm gonna bring you in, I'm gonna show you, show you the difference I have right here. I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer, hopefully you can see this, and I'll tell you how we're gonna fix it. 
All right, so typically what you would do in a situation like this is these, these rail caps are designed uh, for a thickness of material on the inside to be, to be welded to on the inside. This uh, inch and three quarter uh, is designed for a one inch piece of square tube, rectangular tube or flat bar stock or whatever you want to do. Uh, and then this gets welded to this and typically you would go from one end to the other end with just a single piece. However, the problem we have here is this is much thicker, this is much thinner. So what we have is by the time this piece gets in here, see if I can get this set in here for you, like that, and then this piece is set in here, there's a big difference in gap right here, almost an eighth of an inch as a matter of fact. Uh, it's so close that I'm just gonna take and double up this piece of one by and just put it in here and it is perfectly flat with that. So what we're gonna do in this situation, always trying to always trying to fix something is for the 15 inch section here I'm going to double up I don't have a piece of eighth by quarter inch flat bar otherwise I'd use it so I'm just going to double up a couple of eighths eighth of an inch and I'll put that in and then this last piece will be just an eighth by itself we'll butt these together and then we'll go ahead and be able to weld all the way around both sides and then that will really stiffen up this rail and it has served the purpose that it's supposed to serve. So let's go ahead and, and get started on that. All right, so here I've, uh, I've doubled up a couple piece of eighth inch by one inch bar stock. I've got it clamped in the uh, uh, evolution here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces off. These are uh, 15 inches long. This is the length that we need to fill the thinner rail part. All right, and then we'll cut a couple at uh, two and five eighths. Uh, this will be for either end of the rail. All right, so the pieces we got cut now. So we're gonna go ahead, here's the two eighth inch by the 15, they're the full length. We're gonna go ahead and drop those in place right here. They're gonna go like that. And then these are the uh, two and five eighths. They're gonna go on the end right here, just like that. And then we are going to get these things held down by a couple of clamps. Kind of like that, and then this one here. And then finally the last piece, this one is not sitting where I want it to sit. It is, it is now, all right, like that. All right, see if we can find a way to get this in, just like that. All right, so everything is held down nice and tight. And we're just gonna go ahead and, and uh, weld these two pieces together and then tack about every three or four inches apart on either side. There's no reason to weld it out completely on either side. That is just gonna put way too much heat in this thing and you're gonna get some warping for sure. The idea is just to hold the rail, uh, the cap rail to this piece of flat bar stock and by just having a couple of tacks a half inch long on either side and then welding around here, uh, that's gonna serve the purpose for what we're doing. It's not never gonna come apart and that's the, minimal, the most minimum amount of heat we can put in this thing to keep it from warping. So let's go ahead and do that right now.
Okay, got a couple of issues here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I don't know how well the camera can pick this up, but uh, um, there's a pinhole right there. I'm sure you guys can probably see that. That uh, is just some porosity. You know, this is, this is cast iron. Uh, and it just never really welds really that good and so this is to be expected well, I'm gonna go ahead and get over there and just kind of pop a little bump on that and fill this up right here and the other thing is there's a little detail right on the very edge of this rail right here I don't know if you can see it but on both sides there's a little bit of a detail right here and I can't get in there with this flap disc this flap disc is slightly slightly worn so the edges are kind of rounded off. So what I do want to do is get a brand new flap disc in here and that'll give me a nice sharp edge. Let me see how I can show you. All right, so here's a brand new flap disc right here. And you can see that this has got a really sharp edge to it. So when I put this on, hopefully I can just get it right up on the edge right here and get in that detail right there. And the same on this side right here and just clean up and get, uh, get that detail cleaned up a little bit. Fill that hole clean up this detail and I think we're going to be pretty good. That's all we need. So we got our handrail pieces all on there, ground down, and uh, that actually blended in better than I, I thought it would. Uh, it turned out uh, just uh, like I was hoping. Once we get some prime paint on this, I uh, really won't be able to tell the difference. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that uh, we were gonna use this piece of one inch square tube for the post for this, uh, but this stuff here is uh, 063 wall thickness, about a 16th of an inch. I only need one post on this, so I was thinking it might be a little bit flimsy. Uh, I'm hoping to use uh, a little bit thicker wall thickness. I found this piece of one inch square tube, one eighth of an inch wall thickness right here, and uh, which is about 120 wall. But you can see, this just hangs crooked in a dog's hind leg. I don't know if you can see it right here, but my table's flat. 
I'm bouncing this thing on here. You can see that there's flex. This piece has got a little bit of a crown to it. Um, I only need 31 inches of this. Uh, so I really want to uh, see if I can cut this off, straighten it up, and I'm sure I can make this work. It is a weekend. My metal supply store is closed. Uh, I don't want to wait until Monday so I can get this piece to work, I'm pretty sure. All right, let's do it. All right, so I've cut, I've cut this piece right here. It's not quite length, but it's pretty close to it. And this is where our uh, little template is gonna come in handy. Uh, so basically, I've already got the angle right here that we're looking for. This is the angle that we're looking for here. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is take this adjustable uh, angle right here. I'm gonna set it right here, push it right solid onto that. This thing is adjustable, it can go any different ways. I'm gonna set it right on here. And I'm gonna push this thing right in here like this. And that's the angle we're looking for right here. Get this out of the way. This right here, we just use a Sharpie right here. All right, there's the angle. We'll take that over to the saw, find that angle and get this cut. All right, so here you see I've made a jig uh, using a fab block square and a couple clamps. And uh, you know, this works out really good if you're doing multiple of the same. It's fast and it's easy and it's really the way to go. You can guarantee your, your product is gonna get plum every time. And like I said, if you're doing multiple, it works out really well. I had a couple of additional handrails on this project <clears throat> that I uh, was able to use this jig. I didn't film those. <clears throat> but you can just see how, how easy and fast this could be if you had a lot of them to do. All right, for now, now it's just time for the assembly here, and there's really not much to it. Just a single post, and uh, one thing there you don't want to forget, not to put that shoe on. I've done that a couple of times and uh, had to put everything together and cut it all apart just to get that shoe back on. Now this, uh, when I say centered things up, I'm slightly off-centered with this handrail. I just took a look at it a couple of times and it just seemed right that I needed to offset it a little bit. It just looked, <clears throat> it just looked better and uh, I, it was just the angle that it was on. All right, just a couple tacks on one side. You're going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side and now it's ready to get welded out. Everything stayed nice and straight. You know, there's not much to this. It was a very simple project. Um, the, the client was having a hard time getting up and down the step there, and this was a perfect addition for her. Uh, it worked out really good, and she was really pleased. Sometimes it's just the simplest things that make life a lot, a lot more easier. You know, I appreciate you guys. If you haven't checked out my website at jimbosgarage.com, you can go. And I've got torch lead holders over there, table dogs, and some other merchandise. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.
See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.